Hello everyone and welcome to a 7 days to die tutorial on how to build stuff. Specifically covering structural integrity, max load and how that relates to mass, and generally how to build things that aren't going to fall on your head. To start with, we have a row of wood frames or a pillar of wood frames. On top of that we have a concrete block. If we look at the stats for the concrete block, we'll see that it has a max load of 90 and a mass of 15. The max load means that each face can support 90 weight, whatever units of weight the game uses. If we divide the max load by the mass, we get what is called the structural integrity. In this case, that is 6, and that is how many blocks of the same type of material that each face can support. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, but if we add one more, the link here fails. Also note that multiple faces are additive. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and if we add one more, they break. Also note that when you have two blocks of different types, it is the weakest face that matters. Rebar has a max load of 320. Far higher than concrete. However, We can only place up to 90, we'll call them pounds, of rebar until the link fails. Also note that whatever material the pillar is made out of, except for the single block that you're building off of, is entirely irrelevant. With the exception, of course, of zombie proofing the base. You can, in fact, even build them out of spider webs if you really wanted to. Therefore, if you want to determine how many blocks you can build off of a thing, you merely take the structural integrity, multiply it by the number of faces you're going to be connecting, and that's how many blocks you can place. If we were to build all four blocks off of this, we could have 24 concrete blocks connected to this single pillar. There are three main types of pillars. There is a corner pillar, an edge pillar, and a center pillar. Some general rules of thumb. For a corner pillar, blocks for the structure integrity of 16 can go out four blocks. For a edge pillar, blocks of structural integrity of 16 can also go out 4 blocks. However, for a center pillar, blocks with a structural integrity of 16 can only go out 3 blocks, assuming you do it even on every single side in all cases. Blocks with a structural integrity of 6 or 7, and this includes concrete, wood frames and its upgrades, cobblestone and its upgrades, I think a few various other materials. You can get a full list on the wiki, though note that the structural integrity list on the wiki is not entirely accurate. So be sure to calculate the structural integrity yourself from the mass and max load listed on the wiki. Continuing on, as I was saying, for blocks with a structural integrity of 6 or 7, you can go out two blocks, two blocks, and again two blocks. However, in the case of a center pillar, it is exactly two blocks with no margin of error. Uh, 
That's if we add a single more block, the whole thing falls down. Thus, it is not recommended to use things with a structural integrity of 6 for a center pillar. Now let's go into a little bit more advanced stuff and we'll start by trying to explain the math for those rules of thumb. Rules of thumb are fine for building stuff on the fly. However, for truly elaborate structures, you're going to want to do some math to properly plan out where you're going to be placing your pillars. As for really large things, you're not going to be able to move things around very much. Thus, we need to determine exactly how or what the equations will be. Here we have a corner pillar. Branching off from that corner pillar, we have some rebar frames. In rebar frames. In between the rebar frames, we have N squared wooden frames. Those frames are supported by two faces of our metal truss. Thus the equation becomes N squared times the mass of the blocks plus 2 times N times the mass of the blocks equals 2 times max load of our support. When we are using the same type of block, we can divide through by m, the mass, leaving us with n squared plus 2n equals 2 times the structural integrity. And then, if we solve for n, we get n equals the square root of 2 times the structural integrity plus 1 minus 1. We can then extend this to the other types of pillars. For edge pillars, the equation becomes 2n squared plus 3n equals 3 times the structural integrity. And solved for n, that equals the square root of 3 times the square root of 8 times the structural integrity plus 3 divided by 4 minus 3 fourths. And finally, for center pillars, that becomes 4 times n squared plus 4n equals 4 times the structural integrity. Solve for n equals the square root of 4 times the structural integrity plus 1 divided by 2 minus 1 half. While you can get by just using the rules of thumb, these equations are here to provide people who wish to use them some more advanced tools for planning out their structures. Now let's discuss composite structures. This is a composite structure. We have the relatively light and low structural integrity of the wood frames being held up by the high but relatively expensive rebar. Our rebar frames. This allows us to exceed the four block limit giving us a five block limit. However, if you do the math, you'll note that you should be able to go out the full six blocks that wood frames can support. But that is not the case. This is because according to the developers, blocks lose structural integrity the higher they are. Not based on the Z coordinates, but I believe based on the gap between them and the other solid block. In other words, how much air there is between them and the ground. Thus, you would be better off building something with multiple floors rather than building something that's really tall but has one really big floor. Also note that even though this is connected, if we try to walk out here, it collapses because the character itself has an additional weight that comes into play when moving across things. One way to get around blocks collapsing is to double up on the floor and it will not collapse. 
you may be tempted to think that you can do this instead of having the high structural integrity blocks on the edge, but that is not in fact the case. It, the link, is limited by the structural integrity of the wood frames. Another way to get this to go out the full six blocks is to branch out your pillar a little bit, such as we have here. In this way, we have a full six block corner. Though that does not increase the strength of the floor. So we will need another layer to be able to walk on it. Here is another composite structure with the center frame. And I believe it also suffers from the weak frame. So you can extend composite structures out much farther and creating far cheaper structures than you would normally be able to, to create. Now then, let's talk about things like the farm that I built in cases where you're going to have another block on top of this floor. And that block's not going to be supported by a wall or anything. In that case, you need to reevaluate your structural integrity. Dirt has a mass of 10, if that is what we're going to be putting on top of this. Thus, our effective structural integrity is going to be the mass of the metal trussing plus the mass of the dirt, so 30, divided or the max load divided by the combination, the sum of those two. In this case, 10. So that means that our corner pillar can support 20 blocks. Our edge pillar can support 30 blocks. And this can support 40 blocks if we're going to place a dirt on top of them. This comes into play in any case where you're going to have another block on top of this that is going to be resting on top of the floor. Most wall type blocks have a high enough structural integrity that that would not be an issue, though there are some exceptions. Ah! Ouch. Glass only has a structural integrity of one. And also, shingles only have a structural integrity of four. In those cases, you'll want to make sure that you account for the additional weight of the wall when you're building or placing your pillars. If you're using the formula, you merely substitute in the combined mass or you use the effective structural integrity, which, as I said earlier, for these in dirt would be 10. I believe that has hit all the high points. If there are any other questions, please ask in the comments and I'll do my best to explain. Or if there are a number of questions that I have not answered, I will do an additional tutorial to explain those as well. Like if you like, subscribe if you're not, leave a comment if you have anything to say. I do read all the comments. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time!